Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am here today to recap the blanks that we dyed in the sock line special 2 stripes stripes and more stripes live stream. Our dyes in this live stream were food coloring based and we mixed the colors out of a variety of Wilton icing colors and the Wilton Colorite color performance system. We applied all of these colors to the blanks in the stripe patterns using some craft foam brushes to give us some firm control as we hand painted the blanks. While the same dyeing technique was used over these three blanks, the blanks themselves are substantially different. The blank on the top with the bright stripes is a Knit Picks Stroll blank. It is a double stranded blank made out of fingering eight yarn that is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and you can purchase these blanks from Knit Picks already made. There is a link to these blanks in the video description. The bottom two blanks were both homemade out of Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn from Knit Picks. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. The blank on the bottom right was made on a Singer knitting machine in the round to give us a really long single stranded tube of fabric. The crochet blank on the bottom left was made on a size M or N crochet hook using two strands of the worsted weight yarn held together so that way we would have a double stranded crochet blank. As I mentioned, this crochet blank was knit with two strands of the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn held together. I was crocheting about 30 DC stitches, double crochet stitches, back and forth down the length of the blank to create this rectangle that we dyed in the striped pattern. While I was hand painting this blank, I wanted to try to make sure to use one complete row, one complete DC row in each color, but then also have each color go a little bit onto the rounds on either side, so that way we could have a solid and variegated sections between our color changes. We did pre-soak the blank in vinegar before we started hand painting, but you'll notice that the colors sort of spread out. And so while we started with something that was more discrete stripes, we really have this cool striped gradient right now that I think will look really, really cool when we unravel it. What is especially remarkable is when we flip over the blank and look at the reverse side. It is almost as though we are looking at something completely different because of the way the color penetration changed from one side to the other. The red food colorings bound faster so that as the color was going through the blank, we ended up with these really, really bright blues on the other side. I think that as we unravel this blank, this will bring some really wonderful richness and depth to the, to the yarns. The best benefit of using two strands of yarn together is that however this turns out when we unravel the blank, we will have two identical 50 gram balls of yarn so that way we can either make something completely symmetrical or two identical mittens or something out of this really, really cool colorway. I wanted to create a similar colorway but with a different sort of striping pattern on a blank with the same yarn and using the same colors. When I was hand painting this tube of yarn, I made my stripes sort of at an angle, which will give us a semi-solid repeat of color in each section but also a very variegated section as we transition between two colors. The colors ran together a bit, which made some of these transitions a little less distinct, but I think that this will end up giving us a really, really cool pattern on the overall yarn. Flipping over the blank gives us a really nice reveal. Like the previous blank, we had a good penetration of color through to the wrong side, but because of the way that the different colors struck the yarn, we ended up with different tones. And so the tones have a lot less red in them on the back, which gives us some even brighter blues. This will also lead to some really cool vari variation of color once we unravel it, without even accounting for the variation we will see from the fact that we're de dealing with a knit fabric, so there's a little bit of resist within the stitches themselves. Finally, we mixed a lot of bright colors to dye stripes on this stroll fingering blank from Knit Picks. 
This is similar to a pattern I did in the first sock blank special, although the colors are different. But I really wanted to explore these hand-painted stripes to see when we unravel it, how intact some of these stripes end up versus being more variegated in the yarn because the stripes aren't e necessarily even across the entire blank. Since we used just straight food coloring with no guar gum, we did have some bleeding and breaking of some of the colors that we hand painted onto this blank. Using the foam brushes gives really nice control over the color, but you can see in some places where we have intermediate colors that aren't just from the mixing of the colors that we painted themselves. Like here, this blue spread out and broke um, and you know we see the reds binding and the blues spreading out beyond it and we can see that also in some of the violet sections we see the little bit of a blue halo that you get as the colors break because we know that red um, red number three which is present in a lot of these mixtures binds to yarn way faster than a lot of blues and yellows and so that contributes to not just the spreading and mixing but some of the the cool color breaking that we see and then in some cases when the colors break and then mix together, you get some really cool teals, say at the interface of this yellow and Welton's violet. This is a really, really happy striped yarn. And because it was made on a double-stranded blank, we'll have two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn, perfect for knitting socks or almost anything else you could think of. Now, with, if you're dyeing a single-stranded blank and doing a striping pattern like this with no repeats, you could still make a really amazing matched set of socks because since they have similar colors, they would be really coordinated but not identical, which is another really fun way to use a blank. There's no reason why you need to make any socks that you dye identical. It's just something that it's, it all really depends on personal preference. Using the foam brushes, we got really good color penetration on the wrong side of the blank. There are some patches that have a tiny bit more white, which is where we left some space to allow for the breaking on the blank, but overall there should be minimal white on the yarn once we unravel it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this recap and watching all of these really fun sock blank special live streams. I had so much fun dying along with you this week that I know we'll probably need to do another sock link special in the future. If you enjoyed these videos, please remember to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Thank you so much for all of your support.